you know, looking back, we did our, our uh, operational audit back in 2010 and we made so many significant changes to the way that we operate. You know, we changed a lot. I mean, I can say in my time, I think it, it comes naturally. It, it involves naturally change. Mm -hmm. I know we've added uh, a lot more services than we had 10 years ago. And, you know, each water system that comes in is another service and uh, animal control and all those different aspects that some people might not see as separate services, but to bring each one in and each one is a separate budget in itself and has staffing issues and whatnot associated with it. And When I first started here back in 1999, the only, the only water system that we were actively managing and staffing was Aramata and we have six now. Uh, 911. <clears throat> so before my time, but you know, I was heavily involved in its sort of um, resurgence. Like we had a system put in place, which you know, and I was happy to watch the videos of some of the directors that were associated with that when it happened, and you could tell they were immensely proud, and so they should have been because that was a really difficult time and, and a difficult process to bring that to fruition, and it still exists today. 1993, I think, and 95, somewhere in there, like that. They didn't have addresses. Most most of the more rural communities did not have any type of a civic addressing system, which of course relevant to 911, you can't call 911 you know, without an address, they don't know how to find you. So it's also the uh, curbside recycling and garbage pickup, that's, mm -hmm. that's changed. Uh, trails, the retail trails that have been worked on, that's been a huge benefit to the communities, I think. The internet mapping is fantastic, that's used yes. a lot, yes. The digitizing of the survey plans. The, yeah, uh, building inspection plans, all, all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Like, uh, yeah, as built, um, you know, as far as uh, engineering goes, everything is becoming electronic now. So, because we were hand drawing maps, and that's why I got sent down because I actually can manually draft. So I came into this place, and Gordy Davidson and Marion and Rosa in the planning section, and, and they um, started doing all this drafting. And, and I said, you know, if you buy some software, if you buy a digitizing tablet nice big monitor, we can digitize all this. Yeah. And then Tim took us from just basically digital mapping to true GIS and information system. It is a lot easier to do development plans because God, you have all the gauges, you just click a button and you have the gauge. You know, yeah. God, at that time it was a, a very, very big job to, uh, to get the gradients and uh, and uh, to make it workable. When I think of that, we did have, I did have a typewriter. And uh, other machines, we, I don't think we had very much else. I'm quite proud of our achievements in, uh, I think we led the way in many recycling initiatives at the landfill. In the time that I've been here, our relations with our First Nations partners has evolved tremendously from the signing of the protocol agreement through to today where we continue to work on our relationships in many different areas. That to me has been a significant change just in that short period of time. Well in my work I do subdivision development so just seeing all the communities grow is a nice thing to go from uh, a rural area where there's where there's nothing there to see roads being built and water services, sewer, and houses being built in there. It, it's kind of a, a nice thing to to see an evolution. I would think the regional perspective on conservation. Uh, we've taken a regional growth strategy um, into a biodiversity strategy for the whole region. Uh, now introducing new regulations into our all of our community plans to protect the environment and people continually support that type of initiative. So. I'd say expanding our communications. I think that's something that we've done well in the past few years. You know we've sort of grown slowly in getting out there and increasing our public education and our public outreach as well. Uh, getting the directors involved more in the different uh, engagement opportunities that we have I think that that's, uh, that's been something that I really enjoyed. The Area D governance study, which is ongoing right now, and um, so we're part way through that process. We've gone out to the public in Area D just to sort of gauge um, people's thoughts on 
different aspects of the governance and, and services. Um, and hopefully we have some sort of report that we can submit to the province in September of 2016, which will offer some recommendations. So I'm looking forward to that. We'll see what sort of suggestions, whether they're we split Area D and have two directors or you know, whether the water systems all come under one regional district. So there's a bunch of different things right now which are uh, sort of new and exciting that, uh, that will take place in the next year. Generally that uh, we're going in the right direction and uh, we've made the changes that we've had to make 